On November 15th, 2024, nine days after my first video on the exotic PSR J0337 plus 1715 system, covering its violent history, its relevance to general relativity, as well as its very small candidate planet, Voisin and collaborators submitted a new paper which was published on November 18th, which was able to constrain the parameters of this putative exoplanet and its nine-year-long orbit around the ternary system. Composed of a tight binary between a pulsar and a puffy white dwarf, orbited by another dimmer white dwarf. Turns out, assuming that this exoplanet or exodwarf planet is real, it is certainly the smallest and least massive one that is known to humanity at this time. Before you watch my video, you may want to watch my first video for some added context. Here's the link at the top right. All right, back to the study. Wazat and collaborators used 700 extra days of pulsar timing data from PSR J2337 plus 1715 and combined that with the existing data used in their previous papers into the model of this triple system. The main objective of this was to model the residual long-term signal, which was hypothesized to be caused by a small planet orbiting the ternary system every 3,000 days or so, and this additional data has helped constrain the parameters of this exoplanet, such as its mass and orbital parameters. The mass of this planet is the biggest indication of what it could actually be like. With the added data, this exoplanet's mass comes out to around 0.4% that of Earth, making it by far and away the least massive known exoplanet, and almost certainly also the smallest in size. To put this into perspective, that's about a third the mass of the Moon, or about two Plutos. The next least massive planet known, Draugr, or PSR J1257 plus 12b, is estimated at over five times the mass of this planet. Its diameter is very likely less than 3,000 kilometers and is probably more similar to that of Pluto. The planet's orbit has also been more thoroughly established, showing that the planet orbits the triple every 3,310 days, or every nine years and one month or so, on an orbit which is slightly eccentric and severely inclined relative to the plane of the triple system's orbit, about 119 degrees, to the point where this planet exhibits retrograde motion. This inclination value is also interesting as it is very close to a particular value, about 116.6 degrees, which is predicted for an object affected by a kind of Kozai Lidov mechanism, where its eccentricity and inclination are affected by correlated oscillations, resulting in a narrow range of inclinations centered on 116.6 degrees, as well as an argumentative pericenter of about 90 degrees, which stabilize the orbits of bodies in star systems like this one. The exoplanet's orbit exhibits these stabilizing factors, making it less surprising that simulations show that it is stable for at least 100 million years. This is all, of course, if the planet does exist. This signal could also be attributed to red noise caused by small shifts in the pulsar's pulse rate, caused by interior dynamics and thermal shifts from within the pulsar, which can look a lot like a planetary signal. Shown on screen are the residual signals after this hypothesis is fitted onto the small, long-term signal. As you can see, the fit doesn't seem bad as there aren't many residual signals here. This explanation for the signal has not been ruled out yet, with more data being needed to rule it out. Voisin and collaborators also attempt to explain the formation and history of this planet. Considering that it's not very likely that this planet's orbit just started out in this comfortable zone of stability by chance, it's very possible that this exoplanet is the last survivor of a population of celestial objects formed at some point in time, that time likely being about 10 billion years ago, when the progenitor of the present-day pulsar, a B-type star at the time, expanded into a red supergiant, engulfing one of the two other stars, both of which were main sequence stars at the time. The engulfed main sequence star, still orbiting the red giant core, lost velocity from drag by the gas in the red giant's outer layers and transferred this energy to the gas, heating it up and causing it to expand, and expelling a lot of material in the process. This material is hypothesized to have settled into a circumbinary disk orbiting the binary with the common envelope, or the outer layers are usually called in this scenario, then forming a population of small objects of which only one, the observed planet, remains, as all the others were on unstable orbits and were presumably expelled from the system or crashed into one of the stars. The idea of formation of second generation planets via a common envelope like the one orbiting PSR J0337 plus 1715 has been invoked before, 
by discovery of other planets orbiting strange binaries, such as the red dwarf white dwarf systems of NN Serpentis and DP Leonis. Voisin collaborators actually use a slightly different scenario for the formation of this system by Taurus and van der Heuvel than the one that I cited in my video, where unlike the model I cited by Sabach and Soker, in their model, the helium star, which is the former core of the red supergiant, explodes in a supernova after having its outer layers stripped. Therefore, unlike in the model I presented, there is a supernova that needs to be factored in, which has a possibility of pushing the tiny planets out of the system of about 50 to 80%, assuming planets had an original orbital period of about 1000 days, and the three stars had a combined mass of about 4.1 times that of the Sun at the time, which is about twice their current mass. This means that it is very possible for this planet to have survived a supernova, which might also be able to explain the planet's very weird orbit, in particular its very high orbital inclination. This is of course assuming that the planet even witnessed it, since it's possible that no supernova happened in the system. It seems that both models are plausible right now, and we will see which one comes out on top to explain the formation of this frankly insane system and its equally insane exoplanet, or whatever that thing actually is. One last thing. I know that some of us probably have a specific question in mind, which is, could this object be considered a dwarf planet? And if so, could it be one of the first if not the first known extrasolar dwarf planet. It is well known that the IAU definition of a planet is vague, non-quantitative and solar system centric, most notably excluding all exoplanets. This makes it increasingly problematic as we enter the exoplanetary age, and there have been other definitions suggested over the years. One such definition, which takes into account the faulty at times idea that a planet must be able to clear the neighborhood around its orbit calculates the minimum mass of an object needed to clear its orbit over a certain period of time, depending on several factors such as its distance from its star and the stellar mass. This is the so-called planetary discriminant, and the 2015 paper with this definition states that any object with its mass or higher could be considered a planet. In the case of PSR J0337 plus 1715, it's kind of hard to use this equation because the stellar mass has varied so much over the 10.5 billion years that this system has existed for. Taking an average stellar mass of 5 suns and a separation of 5 AU, the planetary discriminant comes out to about 0.02 Earth masses, or about 5 times the mass of this object. So it's safe to say that under this definition, this object would indeed be considered a dwarf planet. However, the initial assumption that a planet must be able to clear the neighborhood around its orbit is vague and may make celestial bodies, which are very obviously planets, like Pylene Siam's Trojan Super Earth, which Kai Planet covers in a video of his, technically dwarf planets. As they do not satisfy this criterion, it seems that an alternative, mass centric definition of what a planet is may be in order, which is what a 2024 paper, building on general conclusions of the planetary discriminant values in different scenarios, gives as some definitions of a planet. The paper states that a planet is any object more massive than 106 trillion kilograms, or about 1.7% the mass of Earth, less massive than 13 Jupiter masses, and that orbits one or more stars, stellar remnants or brown dwarfs. I would personally strike off the last criterion, because it excludes rogue planets, which likely constitute a very significant fraction of all planets. But with a simpler definition, PSR J0337 plus 1715 b also qualifies as a dwarf planet, and would be the second extrasolar object known to do so, after PSR J1919 plus 2134 b, another lunar mass pulsar dwarf planet which I may cover in a future video on some pulsar planet systems. Thanks for watching, remember to like, comment and subscribe for more space content.